150 days, 150 psalms, one verse from each psalm daily. Welcome to the place where you learn the Bible. Even today, we'll be meditating on Psalm 139. Here, the psalmist talks about the uniqueness of God, uh, how God helps people, how God uh, revives his people. When you look at verse 5, uh, he says, Who is like the Lord our God, who is enthroned on high? Uh, he divides his uniqueness. He, he in describe, While describing the uniqueness of God, he divides the psalm into uh, two categories. From verse 1 to 4, it talks about his incomparable greatness. And from verse 7 to 9, it talks about God's incomparable care. Incomparable care. And uh, this psalm is actually uh, seems to be the essence of uh, the song of Hannah. Seems to have the essence of song of Hannah. And even uh, the song of Mary seems to replicate uh, the essence of this particular particular psalm. Uh, we see the song of Hannah in 1 Samuel chapter 2, 1 verses 1 to 10. After reading the Psalm 113, if you read uh, 1 Samuel chapter 2 verses 1 to 10, and similarly when you read the song of uh, Mary, the mother of Jesus from Luke 1, 46 to 55, you will see the being the, the, the some of the words being very similar, very similar. And, uh, and uh, verse 1 to 4 talks about the uniqueness of God's greatness, and uh, the verse 7 to 9 talks about the uniqueness of God's care. So it is in this context, I want to meditate on verse 9, verse 9. Nine. Uh, he makes the barren woman abide in the house as a joyful mother of the children, as a joyful mother of the children. Barrenness is woman is considered to be a shame in Israel. And even today, barrenness is considered as a shame. Uh, women who don't have children, couples who don't have children, they feel um, very much humiliated, very much humiliated. Um, they feel they feel bad, they feel bad, they go through a lot of pain. Uh, they see we, we see the society treating them badly, asking them all the unnecessary questions. I think it's it's so bad on our society's part even on our part to treat it but uh, just like just like how today uh, the families the couples feel incomplete the women feel incomplete even in those days even during the psalmist's time uh, the maybe the women felt very incomplete uh, but it is it is it, it is in this context here here it says uh, that the lord hears them and he blesses them he made he makes the barren women as a joyful mother of of children as a joyful mother of children and uh, this is not just one off verse here but this verse is repeated very often for example, uh, look look in the book of Psalms. Look in the book of Psalms. Uh, Psalms chapter 68 and uh, verse 6. Psalm 68 and verse 6. Again, it says like this. God makes a home for the lonely. God makes a home for the lonely. And uh, Psalm 107. Psalm 107 and verse 41. Psalm 107 and verse 41. Uh, again, it says like this. He sets the needy sequely on high away from affliction and makes his families like a flock. Of families like a flock and uh, let me read to you another verse from 1 Samuel 1 Samuel chapter 2 and verse 5 verse 5 uh, here this is the prayer of Hannah Hannah says even the barren gives birth to seven but she who has many children okay so the barren gives birth gives birth to seven so uh, this is this is a promise or this is uh, a word that God gives. Uh, he makes the barren woman as a joyful mother of uh, of children. So if you're suffering with barrenness, uh, don't lose hope. Don't lose heart. Uh, because God in his right time, he can bless you with a child. And let me tell you, uh, even even if that is not, it might be your barrenness is not in the, is, is, is not about children. Your barrenness might be in other areas. Uh, you, you, you might feel that you're spiritually barren. Maybe uh, uh, you, you might feel barren is nothing but barren barren is nothing but empty maybe you feel empty in your spiritual in a spiritual life maybe you feel empty uh, in your in, in your finances in your materialistic life uh, in your in your official life whatever that might be whatever kind of barrenness that you are facing uh, let me tell you god is able god is able to revive your fortunes. God is able to turn your fortune. That is what we read in, in verse 7. He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the hashim and he is able to make them sit with princes. Dearly beloved, if you are going through a time of barrenness, uh, a wilderness-like experience, I can, I, I can promise you only God can change your situation. 
is incomparable care. Now today I pray that we all, you will experience the incomparable care of God. A care that you have never tasted before. You know, there are many things only God can fulfill. God can give us the fulfillment. There are some fulfillments. There are some satisfactions that man and situations can never give except God. And whatever that, whatever it is that you are going through, let me ask you, cry out to God and He will hear and He will fill your house. He will fill your house with joy, with satisfaction, with blessings and even children. Let, let, it, let this be our hope. Let this be our prayer. Stay blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.